The construction industry in India is one of the largest economic activities and is growing at an average rate of 9.5% as compared to the global average of 5%. As the sector is growing rapidly, preserving the environment poses a host of challenges. Indian Green Building Council IGBC, is a non-profit council that encourages builders, developers, owners, architects and consultants to design and construct green buildings. There is a very interesting Pune based builder called Oricon Developers. We have come here today to their building the Scorpio at Fortune Estates in Hadapsar. This is a green residential building and it has been given the highest IGBC green home rating of the platinum level. Let's take a look at what features it has and let's talk to Mr. Rahul Rajan who will guide us through the various features and facilities of this building. So Scorpio is the fourth residential building in Fortune Estates in Hadapsar and it has achieved IGBC Green Homes rating of a platinum level. So the reason I wanted to get into green buildings is because I realized that uh, real estate industry accounts to at least 38% of carbon footprint in the world and uh, we wanted to reduce the emissions for our tenants in this building. We want them to live in a green way without even knowing it. The Scorpio building is part of the Fortune Estates project in Hadapsar of Pune. It's located in a peaceful neighborhood with lush green tree covers. From the outside, the building looks like any other. But once you enter, you will start to notice the winds of change. So Rahul, I see that you mentioned a lot of features of Scorpio. Yeah. And many of them are green features. Yes. Uh, I'm very keen to know what are the top five green features in Scorpio. So the, one of the things we are very proud about of this building is that it's completely solar powered. Mm -hmm. And uh, all our common amenities like lift, water pump, heat pump, common lights, everything is running on solar power. And additionally, we are giving 100 units free to every apartment every month. Um, we are giving 24-7 hot water, uh, 365 days a year, regardless of weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have given an advanced rainwater harvesting system. We have also given um, charging points in every parking bay, covered and open. And uh, we have given motion sensors to all the common areas like uh, lobbies and fl uh, flow landings. The added security. Added Fantastic. security, yeah. Guys, this is an absolute back to the future moment. This is fantabulous. I can see this is the parking lot of the future. You've got only electric cars over here. Each parking lot has got its own electric charging point. I can see a Hyundai Kona. I can see a Mahindra E2O, another Hyundai Kona, an E2O and E2O Plus. And if you pan right here, this waterproof electric charging point has got an Okinawa Ridge charging over here. This is exactly what the future should be like. Rahul, here we are at an electric vehicle charging point. Yeah. Uh, tell me how this works. Uh, does the owner of the car get billed or does the society pay for the electricity? So what we have done is, uh, as soon as we allot a parking to, uh, to a particular flat owner, that charging point is connected to their individual meter. Their flat meter. Yeah, so only when they use it, they are going to get charged from their own individual meter. Society does not get charged because I think that's unfair until the entire society gets electric vehicles and then there's variations Again, in some might energy consumption. More, some might use less. So it's better to just keep it individual, Get let the uh, flat owner get charged for his own electric vehicle. Currently, Rahul, what happens is what we've seen in many societies, including my own, is that there was no charging point. I had to get special permission from the managing committee of the society. Mm. That wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. And then we had to put a wire mm. all the way from the outside. It was very ugly and clumsy yeah. and a long process. Mm. and. Uh, hard fought as well I would say. Yeah. This is awesome. Okay. I mean uh, immediately even if a person doesn't have an electric car they will be inspired to get one because yeah. charging is so easy. Actually that was the whole purpose of it because we wanted to integrate it within the building and right. they should and customers should not feel that they have a barrier for buying an electric car. It's, it's part of the building, it's, you have it, you have a parking spot, you can buy the electric car. Wow. Here we are in the outside parking lot, the uncovered area and even here we've got a charging point. Rahul, what's the idea behind this? So we wanted to just make sure every customer, whether they take covered or open parking, gets a charging point because there should be no barrier for them to get an electric vehicle. So this way I think they are um, secured enough that if they get an electric vehicle, they can charge here with, a, with peace and it's connected again, this is connected to their individual meter. And as a builder, how difficult was this for you to do? It wasn't actually difficult, you just have to make sure that uh, the wiring is all done 
priorly and you have to make sure that your the cables that you use are of higher quality because once you because it's a long distance to the meter room right so make sure that it's you don't have to have maintenance in the future first of all where is this power coming from so the power is actually coming from the individual meter from MACB but we have energy surplus because of the solar panels so that uh, whatever extra electricity that is being generated goes to our transformer and that is basically coming back to their meters. So in essence it is green right. but this is directly connected to their individual meter. We've observed many times that some builders will install a solar water heater system and some basic rainwater harvesting in their buildings and call it a green building. Oricon developers have taken this to an entirely new level. They have installed a 41.28 kilowatt solar power system which generates 5000 units of electricity every sunny month. Let's talk to Mr. Rahul Rajan and find out more about this solar power system. Rahul, tell us a little bit about the solar power system you've installed here. Yeah, so we have installed a 41.28 kilowatt system which uh, generates, can generate up to 5000 units per month which has to be sunny. Okay. Now uh, most of the energy will be going to every apartment actually. So we are going to be giving 100 units to every apartment and mm -hmm. then the sur surplus of that will be, run, will be used to run the common amenities of the right. building. Uh, we have designed it and we thoughtfully calculated exactly how much we need to generate to provide all these amenities and we have achieved that. Awesome. So basically, uh, you are kind of going to be in a surplus. Yeah, so we will be in a surplus because we don't want to make sure, we don't want that on a sunny month also they have a right. deficit of electricity. So there has to be uh, enough for them to also use it in their apartments and so that everything else works, all the communities work. So the 41.28 kilowatt solar system is connected to a net meter. And the reason we have done that is so that we can uh, export the excess electricity that's being generated that's not being used. That's so cool. what happens is that uh, like when in the night when there's no sun power, that right. time uh, the excess electricity that you have exported, that you can essentially take it back. Take it back. So MSCB or the electricity board acts as a virtual battery. Right. So in this situation what happens is continuously even though there's no sunlight in the night, they're still getting solar power, solar power. through net meter. Fantastic. Yeah. Four months of a year in Pune, you have a pretty cloudy, cloudy weather. It's the monsoon season and is there a drop in the production of electricity over here? Yeah, definitely because the cloud will obviously uh, reduce the amount, of, amount of sun rays that's coming in. But uh, generation drops to around 60 to 65 percent. Oh. So because of that, yes, there is a drop in power. But uh, how we have compensated here is that excess electricity that's generated during the sunny months, right. uh, we expect that to have uh, like a accounting system by uh, through our uh, electricity board. Pro. So that will be used here because of the deficit. All right. So yeah. that makes it up. Makes it up during the uh, monsoon. During the monsoon. Month. So we've seen these huge solar panels. Do they Rahul also help to heat the water? Uh, well, yes, but indirectly because ah. uh, they actually just generate electricity. But for uh, giving hot water to all our apartments, we have this system right. called the heat pump. All right. So this is our insulated water tank right? and we designed this to have um, much more capacity than what uh, residents would use. So it's a 3500 litre tank. It's completely Absolutely. insulated and keeps the heat in. Right. And the hot water gets stored here and from here it goes to the flats and we have insulated right. pipelines everywhere. Uh, and what heats the water is this machine here, it's called the heat pump. It looks very much like an air conditioner to me Rahul. Yeah, well it is but it's like it works uh, like the inverse of it. All right. So what it does, what a uh, traditional air conditioner does is it takes the heat from the room and throws it out. Right. So that's why when you have um, uh, the compressor outside and when you stand outside uh, outside the compressor, you right. can feel hot air. Hot air. That heat is True. actually the heat in the room that's been thrown out. thrown out. In this system, it takes the heat from ambient air. Now ambient air has enough temperature, enough energy for it to collect and throw it into water. Right. Even in zero degrees, even though uh, we may feel cold and we'll, keep, we'll wear right. a sweater and anything. In terms of physics, there's heat in the air still. So it's able to absorb all that heat and then put it into water. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, uh, do I, am I able to control this uh, temperature? Yeah. Uh, so you, you can set keep can the I? temperature set. So right now we have set it at 50 degrees. And we have not provided any geyser point in any washroom. Okay. Yeah, so by so default, they're going to get solar heated water. Yes. Solar heated water. 
Rahul, I can understand how an air conditioner produces hot air. What does this do? So since this takes air and extracts the heat from it and puts it into water, right. the waste product of this system is actually cold air. So it's like an anti-AC. Yeah, <laughs> you could say uh, as good as. So, so but what we have done here is um, we have taken the cold air and uh, we have ducted, made a ducting. The heat pump takes in the air, right. collects the heat, throws right. into water. Right. And then the waste product of it becomes cold air. So what we have done is we have ducted it all the way from the compressor and we have kept put it here so that what happens is cold air being heavier will fall down and start flowing down the right. staircase. So from the top of the building all the way to the bottom. Yeah, it will cooling. It'll, it'll, it'll start cooling this, uh, the building while it is heating water. So what happens with our system is that uh, just by heating the water we have a 350% efficiency. But when you even use the waste product which is the cold, cold air, air. <laughs> our efficiency shoots up to 600%. We are here at a very special room in this building, which is the favorite room of all EV lovers. This is the meter <laughs> room. Yeah. Now so, let's go and... Yeah, okay. Wow. I can see there's a special device attached close to the meter of each flat. Yeah. Can you explain what this is? So, this is a device that I made specially for this building because uh, I was trying to figure out how I could uh, split electricity and distribute it between every apartment. Right, you said that you are giving a hundred units free yeah. to each uh, member, yeah. to each apartment holder. So that comes through this. So uh -huh. on the first of every month, um, there is the meter resets and it gives you hundred units to use. Right. Only once you're done with the hundred units, it moves on to the grid, your grid. Oh. Yeah. So for example, by the twentieth of the month or twenty-fifth of the month, you finish all your hundred units and, and you go into that. Right. Again. After the 31st, on the 31st night, going on to the first, first right. it'll reset back and give you additional 100 Another 100 units. units. So this way, wow. each apartment is getting 100 units, it's distributed equally, there's fairness. It's That's not like some, some apartment is getting more than the other. So was this a device that you could easily buy off the shelf? No, because this no. solution wasn't there actually in the market. It's such thoughtful features and devices you specially designed for people. This is really awesome. Thank you. I mean, Thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Rajan's team has installed motion sensors on every floor that turns off lights to save electricity. All common areas are fitted with energy saving LEDs. Rao, you mentioned there's an advanced rainwater harvesting system installed here. Tell us a little bit more about it. So what we have done here is we have collected all the uh, water that's coming on the roof and we have put it into these two chambers there that you can see that. So that we have two uh, chambers called the desiltation pit. Right. So what happens is water enters there and whatever heavy particles are there, that falls into the chamber. Right. And then clearer water goes in the second pit, where okay. there a further uh, sedimentation, sedimentation happens. Right. And, the water, and then finally the clearer water enters the borewell pit. Uh -huh. But before it enters the borewell, we have an additional stainless steel mesh that's covering the borewell pit. Right. On, only through and which the water will go in and then we finally have very filtered water going in. So because what's happening and traditionally mm. now is that they just connect the uh, pipeline directly, directly to the, to the pit. Well, so, to, yeah. although they are doing it, which is a good thing, we are at least getting some rainwater harvesting there. But uh, that's not the optimal or the uh, correct technique to do it. True. So, that's, so that's the water that's being collected from the roof. Further, we have these paver blocks on the ground here. So, water, water right, still... Right, I can see that there is gaps in between them. Yeah, yeah. So, the, what, what we had actually done here is we uh, made sure that water, water falls on this, does not flow out. Okay. We want to collect this water as well. So uh, there is no PCC done below this. We have done very uh -huh. solid compacting. Okay. On top of which we have put some crust sand and we have paid, uh, put uh, the paver blocks here. So what happens okay. here is that the water just seeps in uh -huh. and it goes into the ground. This year we had um, one of the heaviest rainfalls in Pura. That's true. And we were honestly surprised by its performance because we thought, uh -huh. okay, that heavy rain, we might see some water flowing out flowing of the out. property, but nothing. Yeah, all the water that was uh, oh, it's gone into the ground. It's gone into the ground. Now there's a very special feature I noticed in your lift. There's something called Gen 2 written over here. Yeah. What is that? So our lift has the ability to generate some amount of power. Yeah, so what happens is when the <laughs> cabin goes up, the counterweight starts coming down. Right. You, everyone must have seen this on your open lifts and all. So what happens when the counterweight comes down is instead of having a traditional brake, which they already al also have, have. Here they have a dynamo installed there, so okay. it's, it generates a bit of electricity from the While downward motion. The yeah, so this is just like our cars. Yeah, it's as good as a <laughs> yeah region <laughs> of a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our aim was with all the motion sensors, the lift. Um, uh, we just want to reduce the amount of con unnecessary consumption. Unnecessary consumption, right? Which increases basically the usage of the solar power to be 
for other users. Oricon developers has started to take bookings for their flat, and the response has been good, without any major marketing being undertaken. So Rahul, thank you so much for showing us around. Mm -hmm. And if any of our viewers want to get in touch with you and share in your dream, how can they do that? So I would really recommend people to come to the site and definitely have a look, get a feel of the project. And you can contact us by uh, visiting the website that's given in the comments below. Check out the description below, guys. Yeah, and uh, our phone number is also there. Please give us a call and do come here. And uh, before we wrap up, I just want to give a gratitude to my dad who wasn't here today. For uh, he's actually traveling, but I want to give him the limelight for allowing us to do a building like this of the scale. Adopting green building techniques and designs can help save up to 40 to 60 percent of energy consumption. Not only are green homes more beautiful and eco-friendly, but they are also cost-effective in the long run. Most importantly, patrons of a green building can happily use electric vehicles and can live with the fact that their house is contributing towards the betterment of the planet. We wish the team at Oricon Developers the best of luck.